I want to introduce the next panel, uh, which will uh, be talking about working with partners, volunteers, and students. And I want to start out with a little show of hands. How many of you guys have student employees? That's good. That's good. That's good. How about volunteers? Very few, yeah. Well, either. Okay. And how many of you have explicit partners for your projects? Okay. All right. So I'm just trying to get the sense of our, our universe. So there are three of us that will be speaking today about working with partners, students, and volunteers. Myself from NCC, Michaela Kelly from uh, Lafayette College, and where is she? Noriko Sugi, oh, there she is in the back, who you heard this morning um, talking about her work at Kalamazoo College and with the oral history synchronizing, oh. Metadata synchronizing. Metadata synchronizing. I, I knew I was going to watch that. <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, we all use volunteers in various ways, and what do the people who, work, who are volunteers for NCC do for us? Well, almost all of you, if you're in the Japanese studies field, you have been roped into doing something by me for over the last two decades. And I hope you all will continue to work with my successor, uh, who will be coming in a few months. You're critical in our development of services because, as you know, there are over 250 institutions in the U.S. and a couple of dozen in Canada that have Japanese studies undergraduate programs that offer a full degree, have several years of language, and of those, fewer than 25 have full-time Japanese studies librarians. Many of you wear several hats, Japanese, Korean, mm, digital library, reservation, all those things. So we all have to spread ourselves extremely thinly. And NCC is here partly to hopefully ease the process of making things accessible to those people, faculty, students, and librarians who are out there at institutions that don't have the services of the treasures like you. So these are the various things that we need to do with our, with our volunteers. And I thank you all for what you have done over the years and what you will continue to do. So who does volunteer work for NCC? We have elected faculty. Uh, we have elected librarians. We have one of our elected faculty sitting here somewhere, at least she was a minute ago. I think she ran out of the room. Uh, but we, we have about 12 people who are elected to three-year terms. We also have many committee members and working group members. We have undergraduate and graduate uh, interns, and then we have program hosts and their staff, such as the University of Toronto, which has done such a fabulous job with this. We couldn't do any of these kinds of programs without those partners and volunteers. So I just want to talk about a few key things that we do that require our volunteers. First of all, most of you know me fairly well. Did you know that there's only half of me here? NCC only employs a half-time person, in theory. So in order to be able to do the projects we do, we depend on people like Fabiano and Yuta, who's hiding somewhere. Uh, right there, right next to Fabiano. <laughs> Who are our digital resources co-chairs. And that committee always is keeping an eye on where we're going, what the need is, and how it's changing. And this 
iteration, this third year rotation, when Fabiano came in, the committee decided that they really needed to divide their interests and focus part of their interests on licensing and helping you in the field gain access to the digital resources that we need, and also to do some advocacy and lobbying to, with the Japanese vendors and National Diet Library, Nichibunken, Kukubunken, all of those wonderful providers that we want to work with more closely. And also to help faculty and students understand digital tools. And I hope that's one of the things we're doing with this workshop. Um, we also have a great need to support interlibrary loan. Every single one of you in this room, I think, has had something to do with ILLDD working with either the goods who were the co-chairs on the last iteration of this committee or to uh, Toshie Mana and Peter Bay who are the current chairs and there's probably two or three other people who have done it in the past sitting here. We only ask people to serve three years. Most of them can't take it much longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we are very grateful to these committees and what they do. The other question I want to ask you is, do you need resources? And if so, <coughs> Why aren't you applying for an MBS grant? We had the smallest application pool this year in quite some time. And I'm wondering why. There are some of you out there who usually apply and I didn't hear from you this year. I can guarantee you that the Friendship Commission will not give us that money anymore if we don't have a good number of applications. So keep that in mind for next year. Um, I hope you will apply. They've already cut our funding for MBS by 40%. So we are going to try to restore it, but we won't be able to restore it unless we can demonstrate the need for it. And if it goes away from MBS, it will go away from us, period. They'll give it to policy research, or they'll give it to an arts program or they'll give it to somebody, but they won't give it to the library field. So it's not interchangeable, and it's really important. Fabiano. Fabiano. This man does everything. <laughs> he really does. He really does. And he is now the chair of our image use protocol website and group. This is a project that was started when Pokeco was chair. And it was a brilliant idea that came from faculty who said, we have a really hard time figuring out how to get visual images from Japan. We don't understand the copyright process. We don't understand how to go to somebody and say, who owns the rights to this? We don't understand how to write a letter in Japanese. And our publisher won't take anything that's written only in Japanese. So the committee created bilingual templates, and it is one of the most popular of our websites. People are always asking us how to do these things. And Fabiano and I and other members, okay, field the questions. So, anyway, I just want to quickly run through a couple other things. Adam Lisbon, thank you very much for what you did with the Subject Guides portal. It is wonderful and it's very popular and keep using it. All of you contributed. Susanna Fessler's guide, 25 units on Japanese research and bibliographic methods. You should all be using it. You should be telling your students about it. Adam, thank you for continuing to teach it. Um, it's a great, great resource. And I wanted to make sure to mention the Library and Professional Development Working Group, Fabiano and Setsuko. Those are the people that brought you this workshop. Let's have it.
wanted to say a little bit about interns. We have lots of wonderful interns who work for us. Adam was an intern. I don't know how we survived without Adam. He did so much. Um, and we've had several others. I'm very proud of Anna Wada, who was just finishing her library degree, and Patrick Carlin, who's just finishing his JET program and is about to start his uh, graduate work at the University of Massachusetts. These are great people, and thank you all for joining us. Thank you very much.